That's right. I've been to prison. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the chaos. My name is Vlad the Tech, and today I'm going to be telling you about what I learned last week whilst in prison. This sounds terrible, but you, if, for those of you who do, don't know me, I'm a correctional officer at a uh, maximum security prison. There. Hopefully that clears up things up. So last week I started my on-the-job training, so they had me in GP, which is general population. I noticed that a lot of businesses like acronyms. Also, can you fucking stop? Oh yeah, before I get too far into this, the heater in the back is running, so that if you hear anything weird over the audio, yeah, that's what that is. Um, I'm not turning it off, it's fucking cold. Anyways, back to me going to prison. That joke's not getting old anytime soon. So apparently they did something with me that normally they don't do. They actually bounced me around to multiple different housing units inside of the prison which apparently no one ever does. The first time they actually put me on a house, they actually didn't put me where I was supposed to be in the house. They actually took me to the back office that was at the house where all the counselors and stuff hang out, which is not where you're supposed to be. On top of that, I was apparently in the worst house over on A side, which by the way, the prison that I work at is divided into two sections, A side and B side. This housing unit is where they keep all the alphas, which are the inmates who are most likely to reoffend. If I remember correctly, they have alpha, beta, and sigmas. Betas are and Sigmas are least likely to offend whilst in prison and most likely to be offended against. So they put me in the third housing unit, also known as Three House, which to my understanding is the worst housing unit to be placed in if you want to learn anything. Not that the people there who were teaching me weren't good at teaching me stuff. It's just that holy hell, were so many people in there so uncooperative. I'm talking about the offenders, by the way. There were a bunch of things that you're supposed to do when you're in prison that you that all of these people were actually doing. They were taking too much time on the phone. They were making lines in front of the phones. They weren't returning to their cells. They, it was just a mess. Not to mention there were three people in there with different violations. Actually, yeah, I think three people had three major violations. So all three of them have to be transferred to um, Seven House, which is, for lack of better terminology, the crazy house. One of the two crazy houses anyways. These houses are where inmates are put that are on full lockdown. These are either incredibly violent offenders or people with actual severe mental conditions who are actually a clear and, Im in a, a clear and imminent danger to other offenders and staff members. There's a reason why these people are isolated from the general population. And boy, when I walked in there, weren't there some things people wanted to say to me? I was called all sorts of names and described violent acts people would inflict upon me if they ever got out. You have people in there screaming, yelling, kicking doors. It's... It's, it's a mess. The second time I went up there, I actually had to get pulled aside and re-escorted back to Three House because the offender we were escorting up there was getting a little, um, uncooperative. And basically another correctional officer saw that and did, just didn't want me to get hurt because I haven't gone through Academy yet. Basically in order for me to move around the inside of the prison, I actually have to have somebody escorting me everywhere because I'm not allowed to use force because not qualified yet. You also learn really quick that um, a lot of offenders actually try to use manipulation tactics on you, basically trying to get you to say yes to things, because that one teeny tiny little yes could turn into a really big yes down the line. You have a lot of offenders asking you what time it is, even though they have a clock in their wing. Again, it's a small, subtle way to get you to say yes. They will also try to love bomb you. I actually had that happen a couple of times when I was actually uh, working with another officer um, over on mainline, which is basically the chow. Chow, chow, chow. How do they, how do, how do people in the military say that? Chow line? Working in the chow line. God, I sound official now. Aren't I a sexy CEO? Let's not do that. <laughs> also, I learned of a great way to save money while working there. Just don't bring your own food. The cooks actually cook a whole ton of extra food and they will either give it to staff members or they will freeze it and ship it to other facilities or freeze it and then reheat it at the facility that I work at. So a lot of officers will actually just not bring a lunch and just go work mainline and get food afterwards and then take it back to their house and finish the day out there. Also, you probably want to bring some kind of lunch or have somebody grab you a lunch while you're there because you it's very, very important that you don't leave your post without somebody there to relieve you because bad things happen when that when you do that. By the way, this is all still day one. Day one really sucked because we had to do a lot of extra walking on top of it because there are normally gates that divide the houses that are between the houses. Uh, there's a hair flying around, sorry. And normally somebody in the control center will unlock these gates and you'll be able to open them and go through. But the cold weather can sometimes freeze the lock shut. And there's another pathway on the inside that leads around the yard up to the front of the prison. 
where you actually have to go to cross from A side to B side to transfer people over to Seven House. By the way, the hottest temperature here has been 20 degrees. It was cold. Today it's five degrees, hence the heater's running. In fact, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but I, the dry air has actually burnt my hands because I don't wear gloves. Just means I need to moisturize. Day two, I was put in one house. And this was the easiest day ever. Not only were there a lot of people there that were working at the house, plus me and another trainee, this was also considered the geriatric house. So it's basically where the older offenders go. Not a whole lot of movement, not a whole lot of bad things happening. Also, it's not an alpha house. I think it's a beta house, but I'm not sure. A beta sigma. I. I don't remember. But anyways, um, yeah, that was an easy day. By the way, I have a friend in there now who I still need to add on Facebook, but I have ADHD, so I keep forgetting to do that. I should probably do that once I'm done with this recording, but that's probably not gonna happen. If you're watching this, dude, don't worry. I will add you, I promise. I just sometimes forget that other humans exist. Well, this is actually where I learned to... Well, I didn't learn to do counts there. I learned to do counts the day prior. What did I learn on this day? I don't think I learned anything on that day. I think I literally just had paperwork signed by the field training officer and that was it. Also, one of the other officers there was actually kind enough to bring us all grilled cheese from the chow line. As I was saying, by the way, I've been bringing my own lunch and not eating it. <laughs> Seriously, I'll bring my own lunch. I will put it in the refrigerator to make sure it doesn't go bad, but I will eat there. And the whole reason for that is, again, if I'm stuck at a post or in a, and I can't find an escort or I'm not allowed to leave for whatever reason, I've got something there. But for the most part, I want to eat the food there so I can save myself a little bit of money. But hey, if I can't get relief of my post or whatever the reason being, I've got a backup so I don't starve, especially, which is especially good when I don't eat in the morning. Day two, not a whole lot happening, but day three, was interesting. Once I figured out I was, I had been moved from one, three house to one house, I just decided to get the idea in my head that, hey, maybe I should explore all a side has to offer and go to houses two and four. So I specifically requested going to two house and they put me in there the following two days. So Wednesday, Thursday, two house. This is actually where I actually did security checks. They specifically asked me if I wanted to go do security checks. I said yes, because Walking's good for me. Now security check is actually fairly straightforward. You walk around the inside of the wings and you're checking for any suspicious activity, you know, people lighting stuff. You know what I mean. People doing bad things to each other that I can't mention on YouTube. You're also looking for people tattooing because um, that's not allowed. You're basically looking around trying to see if there's any suspicious activity or possibly an injured or even dead offender it does happen. You're supposed to check that out. And you're supposed to do that twice every hour, which I was actually, um, talk, um, I actually got that question asked to me by one of the majors on day one when they hadn't taught me anything yet. That was literally the first thing I learned. And I learned it by being, getting a pop quiz for it when no one was teaching me anything. Hopefully no one takes that out of context. It was a busy day, okay? Two house though, there was a, there were people there who really knew what they were doing. They were really consistent. But day four, I really had to flex my muscles. Cause day four, um, the guy who I was training with in two house, yes, I was stationed at two house again. He decided he want to, wanted to do work the logs in the computer and just let me take over the two busiest wings in the house. And the offenders there now hate me because the first thing that alpha offenders try to do is see what they can get away with with the new guy. So what they were doing was they were making lines for phone or, or they were taking phone time that wasn't theirs to take. A couple of people were on the phones and I specifically requested to them three times, get off the phones, it's time to rotate out. They took five extra minutes on the phone. So I looked over at my partner and said, hey, should we shut the phones off in our house? He just went ahead and did it. This is not a normal occurrence, by the way. Um, normally people don't hold past their time, but holy shit were they pissed. I literally told the inmates, look, if you guys you guys have to be responsible. There are other people who want their phone time. And that's how they learned that even though I'm new, I still mean business. And then of course there was yesterday, which was actually a holiday. Um, Abraham Lincoln's birthday was yesterday. And this was an incredibly easy day. Once again, I learned absolutely nothing because I had already learned all the stuff they wanted me to learn in uh, on-job training, OJT, whatever. Pretty chill day, got my tests and stuff done. And I got to work mainline a couple of times and I actually got a chance to try the prison food, which by the way, um, all the horror stories you've heard about prison food, meh, it's actually not that bad. Um, Think of just instant food or like uh, school cafeteria lunches. 
that's that's the quality of food you're getting. It's not the best, but honestly, it's definitely not the worst I've ever had. Really, the worst thing I've ever had there so far was the baked beans. And they had fake cheese sauce, okay? <laughs> but literally, most of my lunches were just loaded with carbs because it was cold outside. So, like, right after lunch, I had, like, a, just a massive amount of energy to burn off. I'm like, I want to do some walking. And that is what happened in my week at prison. Also, I do want to mention right here a couple of you guys who have been commenting about my health and saying that if I need to take a day off, you guys will understand. You guys actually gave me a small panic attack because I hate it when people worry about me like <laughs> I'm doing fine. I can handle this stress. I've done it before. I have worked a full-time job with overtime and was posting a video literally every day before I quit YouTube the first time. This is nothing I'm not familiar with. Burnout really hasn't been too big an issue. So, and the longer I, you know, keep this up, the less likely I am to burn out because it'll just become routine to do these things in this order. Anyways, thank you for the support, and also thanks to whoever you were who gifted me a sub over on Twitch. But anyways, if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more content like this. I'm probably going to be doing this once a week, If, but next week is going to be boring, so don't get your hopes up too high. If you want to support the channel, there will be links in the description below to Amazon wish lists and a Patreon page, which you can support me there. Or you could just, like, you know, subscribe and shit. That sounded condescending. Please subscribe. You do it for daddy. I'll stop now. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section or over on our Discord server. Again, links below. And I'm going to take off because I have more videos to record. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to show me some love down below by hitting the like button. And don't forget to check out the annotations for more videos. And I will see you in the next video.